Hello, and welcome to the first edition of Nittany Watch. I'm Brianna Parnell White. And I'm Mitchell Carson. Nittany Watch is our student-produced digital magazine show that brings you news, sports, and information to Penn State Harrisburg and the surrounding region. During each program, we will present an in-depth look at the people, places, and events that make Penn State Harrisburg and the Susquehanna Valley a great place to call home. On today's show, we'll introduce you the new student newspaper, The Blue and White Journal. We'll also give you the inside scoop on the Harrisburg Comedy Zone. And Casey Blast will join us for his sports report. The communications department challenged their students in a photography contest. The results hang outside the Kalkarni Theater. That's right. Check out these beautiful photos. Reporter Oscar Cartagena has the inside scoop. Penn State Harrisburg, a campus welcoming to all students, and most of all, a university that highlights students' talents and creativity. This is Inspirations, a photo exhibit hosted by the Penn State Harrisburg School of Humanities. We basically had to capture like just very like intimate moments within the class. And the reason why I took a picture of her and her mentor drawing and just their hands was because she didn't feel comfortable with the camera like in her face. So I was like, okay, well, how can I like honor her like wishes while still getting like a powerful photo? So I was like, I can just get their hands of them drawing. It's just a very powerful moment. And I'm Collier. The competition was divided into two categories. The first, known as Our World, and the second as Inspirations. The first category focused on displaying representations of individuals with disabilities, such as autism, and celebrating their commitment and social life on campus. I think the photo exhibition went pretty well. Um, I took some photos of Evan. He's in the Career Studies Mentorship Program. I followed him around to his classes, took some pictures in his classes, just got some pictures of him in his everyday life. The picture was Evan taking notes in his sociology class, but uh, he really liked that class. He was very connected to it. He was very adamant on me going to that class to take pictures um, of him participating. So it was really nice, uh, that photo specifically, the second category focused on displaying images that inspire students. Over 60 photos were submitted to the event, only 30 were chosen to be displayed, and six photos were recognized as the best. Photos will remain displayed in the Kolkarni Theater for the remainder of the semester. Reporting for WPSH-TV, this is Oscar Cartagena. The students did an amazing job with their photography. We'll be right back with a look at another art exhibit and a look at the Harrisburg Comedy Zone. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back. This fall heading to and from classes, you might have noticed an art display in the back hallway of the Olmsted building. That acclaimed artwork is the talented efforts of Penn State Harrisburg professor Jeffrey Bai, a successful artist with a passion for showing students how possible a career in art can really be. Reporter Kayla Garman has the story. Professor Jeffrey Bai displayed his paintings this fall from October to December in the Olmsted building next to the Chancellor's office. Looking forward to the show, Bai stated, quote, I would be happy to have my paintings exhibited next to the Chancellor's office. These works were completed using acrylic and oil-based paints and are a series of older paintings Bai described as, quote, a great cross-section of his work. Bai paints lots of cities and airport images inspired by his own life and travels. Having lived in Brooklyn, New York for 15 years, his paintings are known for capturing and preserving images of our country's urban decay as well as the people who inhabit those environments, according to his artist bio. Bai earned his undergraduate degree from the Rhode Island School of Design and spent a year abroad in Italy under the European Honors Program. He earned his Master of Fine Arts at the New York School Academy of Figurative Art. At age 26, Bai was given his first solo show and became the youngest master within the Copley Society of Boston. Student Sophia Steltzer states, As a painting one student, it'll be exciting to see such artwork displayed. 
It's also super inspiring and a great reflection of the importance of art on our campus. This inspiration Seltzer referenced is exactly why Bai does such displays. He finds they are a good way to show students the process and possibilities of becoming an artist. He wants to keep artwork available and accessible while also promoting student works. The works of his students can be viewed on the third floor of the Olmsted building. In the spring, Bai will continue bringing his art to campus and sharing his knowledge with students by teaching two sections of Intro to Drawing and a section of Intro to Painting. More information about his work or context can be found at jeffby.com. Speaking of talent, when was the last time you had a good time with lots of laughs? It's been a while. <laughs> well, I have a great suggestion. How about you check out the Harrisburg Comedy Zone? Reporter Casey Blast gives us an inside look. If you're looking for a fun place with good food and funny people, the newly renovated Harrisburg Comedy Zone is exactly what you are looking for. Located just off Route 83 in New Cumberland and attached to the Boomerang Bar and Grill, the Harrisburg Comedy Zone has been a staple in Harrisburg comedy and continues to dish out hot wings and healthy laughs to the local PA residents. After their much needed renovation, they are now most known for the beautifully designed comedy room, which is garnered with paintings of legendary comedians such as Eddie Murphy, Chris Rock, Bill Murray, and even Shrek. The Harrisburg Comedy Zone presents live comedy from professional touring comedians every Friday night at 8 along with two shows on Saturdays at 8 and 10 p.m. If you are looking to get on stage but aren't a professional comedian, don't worry. Every Thursday night at 7.30, the Harrisburg Comedy Zone hosts an open mic night for anyone that is looking to explore their funny side. I'm David Firestein. I'm 31 year old. I'm doing comedy just because uh, I love entertaining people. I just figure out it's fun to make jokes and to make people laugh. Whether you just want to work on your comedy game or to just make your friends laugh, the open mic night is a great opportunity to get stage time or to just simply relax and have a few chuckles with your buddies. This is something very thankful. If you go out there, it will bring you forward in your life. You, you lay, lay apart your insecurities, you go out there, and every time you go out there, you get more secure about yourself. And it really is a very blessing for yourself. And I can, you, you, and also you, Chloe, go on stage. This is something very good for you in life. This is something that everybody out there, this is a blessing. Do it. It will be good for you. Check out the Harrisburg Comedy Zone for shows on Friday nights at 8, Saturday nights at 8 and 10, and Thursdays for open mic night starting at 7.30. For more information, head to HarrisburgComedyZone.com where you can see all the upcoming acts and buy tickets to reserve seating for shows. Reporting for PSH TV, this is Casey Blast. That looks like a lot of fun. I'll have to check it out. We'll be right back after this short message. There's been a big project going on in the communications program this fall. Yes, we are creating a brand new newspaper at Penn State Harrisburg called the Blue and White Journal. I got a behind the scenes look at the process. It's a newspaper ran and organized by students, the Blue and White Journal. The students came with an idea for a newspaper for Penn State Harrisburg and the world. What we'll do, Chris will do the same thing. We'll do it. Dr. North is the practicum courses instructor for the communications program. He is also the faculty advisor for all student media, including the Blue and White Journal and WPSH TV, the new student broadcast entity in the program. 
You are the mastermind behind the Blue and White Journal. What was your main idea behind this project as well as other projects with media for Penn State Harrisburg? Was this idea of convergence. We're not only doing the Blue and White Journal as a journalistic newspaper, but we're also going to do a new, new TV show called Nittany Watch, which will be a magazine show. And I wanted to give the students an opportunity to do real-world journalism and real-world projects that they can then put in their portfolio when they leave and look for work in the outside world. Doesn't matter if you're getting a job in journalism, doesn't matter if you're getting a job in anything dealing with communications. If you have a newspaper in your background, or a TV show in your background, or all the above, and you can prove that you can do all of the above, then you're going to be a lot more um, hireable by those entities out there that are looking for people that really know how to communicate, and that's what this is all about. So it's about kids getting to experience something they didn't get to experience before and also possibly building a program at Penn State Harris. Exactly. I mean, one of the things I really want to see with student media is this idea that you get practical experience and you can get it all through your entire career at Penn State Harrisburg. And so that way you can work in newspaper, you can work with broadcast show, but you'll be working with all of them because our students learn how to do everything. They don't, they're just not just writers, they're also shooters, they're also editors, and so they learn how to do everything. The whole idea behind Convergence is that you become a total journalist so that you know how to shoot photographs, you know how to shoot video and, cre and create packages, you know how to shoot um, the photographs for a newspaper article and you know how to write the newspaper article. And the collaboration is complete. The Blue and White Journal name came after an extensive um, voting process for the class and we figured out, we started with something like 16 different names or more and boiled it down to the Blue and White Journal and the same with Nittany Watch. We, we decided on the name for the Nittany Watch and as I say, when I say we, it's the students. All I did was facilitate it. It's all student powered. In the class, student Kayla Garman Which serves as editor in chief. Um, getting that position happened early in the semester after some like entry level article training. Um, it's been really rewarding to know that my professor had that much faith in me from the beginning. And it's gonna be okay. every student it's gonna in the tomorrow. class has a different job to do, working on different sections of the paper. It sure took a lot of hard work, but we are very proud of this first edition. Look for us this coming spring. We'll be right back with Casey's Sports Report. Exercise provides me a healthy method of stress relief. I like to work out because it keeps me flexible. I like exercising because it keeps my mind focused. I exercise to get my daily dose of serotonin. I exercise to reach my health and fitness goals. I'm Casey Blask, and welcome to my sports report. Let's get right into it. The men's soccer team, with the 2021 season in the books, the Penn State Harrisburg men's soccer team roared back into championship contending form after going a full year without a season winning its second straight conference championship, and even making it all the way to the NCAA Division III tournament, where they lost in the first round to Johns Hopkins by a score of 2-1. to one. The highlight of the 20th ranked Lions came in late October when they upset the undefeated number two ranked Messiah Falcons in their regular season finale. Joey Amon led the team with 12 goals, Jose Palameque led the team with 10 assists, and goalie Nicholas Gugliametti led the team with 36 saves. The team finished their season at an impressive 15-2-1, 8-0 conference play, and netting a total of 62 goals. Head coach Daniel Krasanowicz and the team now have their eyes set on getting back to the NCAA Division III tournament in 2022. Now let's head over to women's soccer. The Penn State Harrisburg women's soccer team made history this season, making the NCAA Division III tournament for the first time in program history, where they lost in the first round to McDaniel College by a score of 2-1. Ryan Sokash and Kali Otland both led the team with eight goals. Katie Kosovac led the team with eight assists, and goalie Delaney Shiflett led the team with a total of 83 saves. As a team, the Lions won the United East Conference Championship, beating Penn State Berks 2-1. Kylie Otland named the conference tournament MVP for scoring both her team's goals in the final game. The women's soccer team finished the season at 12-5-4, 7-0-1 in conference play, and netted 42 goals. 
Head coach Brandon West has and his team now have their eyes set on getting back to the NCAA Division III tournament in 2022. I'm Casey Blask, and I'm back sporting a new mask, and uh, let's get right into the winter sports seasons. The winter sports season got off to a good start for the basketball, with the men racking up nine wins this season, and the women off to a promising start, winning five of their last nine games played. will get the look at the three, and he drills it. The Penn State Harrisburg men's basketball team is coming off a solid win against Scranton University, winning by a score of 71 to 60. Donye Baylor Carroll led the Lions with a game high 27 points, along with six assists and four rebounds. Baylor Carroll has become the sixth and fastest player in program's history to score 1,000 points, achieving the feat in only 60 games. He surpassed the 1,000 point mark in a clutch overtime win against Washington College 87 to 84, garnering him the United East Conference Player of the Week. The PA native is averaging 17.8 points per game, 4.7 assists per game, and 2.7 steals while shooting 42.1% from the field. In their 10 games so far this season, the Lions are 9-1, 2-0 in conference play, dropping their only game to Delaware Valley Rams and are averaging 76.3 points a game while shooting 45.9% from the field. On the defensive side, they're currently holding the team's 62.7 points per game and a 38.5% field goal percentage. The Lions are scheduled to play next against Marymount at home on January 2nd at 2 p.m. Now, let's get into the women's basketball. The Penn State Harrisburg women's basketball team is coming off a tough loss to Morrisville State, losing by a score of 69 to 67. Kendice Butler led the Lions with a game high 19 points, six rebounds, and three assists. On the season, Butler is leading the team in scoring, averaging 15.3 points per game. Anna Mackin is leading the team in rebounds, averaging 6.9 rebounds per game. And Jayla Galbraith is averaging a team best 3.6 assists per game. As a team, they're averaging 64 points per game while shooting 36.9% from the field while holding their opponents to 58 points per game and 33.9% field goal percentage. Jayla Galbraith was named United East Women's Basketball Player of the Week on November 30th after scoring 27 points on 10 of 12 shooting, seven of which were threes, along with five assists and three rebounds in a victory against Pitt Bradford. The 5-4 Lions, 1-1 one one in conference play, are scheduled to face off at Messiah after winter break is over on Wednesday, January 5th at 6 p.m. Now, let's get into the hockey team. The Penn State Harrisburg hockey team is back in action, sporting brand new home and away jerseys after taking a year off due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The last time the blue and white stormed the ice was back in 2019, where they made it all the way to the DVCHC championship, where they suffered a tough loss to Cutstown University. Now, it is 2021 which has given head coach Chris Moore a full extra year to fully prepare his team for the long journey ahead. The Lions headed into the 21-22 regular season with a preseason record of 3-0-2, but were stunned by Catholic University by a score of 7-4 in their season opener. Since their season opening loss, Penn State Harrisburg has gone 4-3, defeating Millersville, Salisbury, and Bloomsburg twice. As a team, they have scored 74 goals and have only surrendered 48 on the season. The 4-4 four four Lions are set to face off against the Newman Knights at Newman University after winter break is over on January 21st, and the time is to be determined. That's all for this edition of my sports report. Tune in next semester as the men and women's teams surge into the new semester. Thanks, Casey. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. You can watch our show on the Penn State Harrisburg Student Media YouTube channel. For all of us here at Nittany Watch and WPSH-TV, thank you for watching. Thank you.